Hey everyone, Sean's Trains. I'm working on some coal carts with a Superior Scenics layout. And what I'm doing is I'm going through about 54 uh, Beth Gun gondolas between Walther's, Roundhouse, Atlas, and any other manufacturers that we come across, and I'm tuning them. So what happens to cars as they age is things just get wore out, right? They get used, they, get, they sit for a long time. Um, things can kind of warp, tweak, uh, move in places or do things that we don't necessarily want them to do. But some of the key ingredients in tuning any car to work well long term is metal wheels, metal couplers, and tuning your trucks. So we've already got two out of the three key ingredients on these cars here. So they've already gone through, they've had metal wheels and metal couplers on them for years. But I don't know if the trucks were ever tuned, and even if they were, well, it's been a long time. So what I like to do is go through, take the trucks off, clean them up, uh, clean the wheels a little bit, and then I'll actually take a truck tuner you can buy from Micromark and actually carve out and resurface the interior of the journals where the points of the truck or the wheel sets sit. And what that does is creates a new service, right? Like resurfacing your brake rotors when you get new brake pads. So it rolls smoother, it rolls more comfortably. And if you really use stuff a lot, especially Walter's passenger cars, you should use a drop, just a light drop, a very light Lavelle lube. Um, I don't because my stuff doesn't get used as much as it used to. But when I was a regular at the Model Railroad Club and had a ton of ore cars, I had a drop of lube in all of them. And you know what? It makes a difference. But if you don't use it a whole lot and it does a lot of sitting, it's not going to do you a lot of good. Um, and I wouldn't use it in all your rolling stock, just again, the stuff you use the most. So your favorite unit train, passenger trains, uh, and always keep your locomotives lubricated. So we're going to go through, I've already done the first three cars, and we're going to take this car, we're going to take the trucks apart, we're going to tune the trucks, we're going to readjust the trucks when we put them back on the car, so there isn't a lot of wobble and stuff. Uh, one thing that you can come across, especially on ore cars, unit ore trains especially, is um, you get the truck that's hunting around. So because it's a shorter wheelbase than it is wide, sometimes it'll hunt. And what that is, is it's going like this. It's like going like a fish, fish tailing, within the tracks. And it's kind of hunting around for center. And it's not finding it. So if you have a little more tension on that truck, it won't do that as much. Kind of acting like a shock absorber in your suspension in your car, keeping it from just going continuously. So if that's a problem on your stuff, maybe tweak it just a little bit just tighten that screw just enough to get it to stop doing that but you still want just enough play that it's going to work if you have a very nice layout and the track work is perfect you can tighten your trucks a little bit more to the point where they just turn and just have one that wobbles a little bit but on a layout that you know is you know weather dependent that you know if it's humid and the track starts to move around a little bit or if it gets cold and it tightens up um or the track constriction you've got bigger gaps and whatnot then you're going to want trucks and uh, rolling stock that's a little bit more uh, durable for that. So that's what I'm doing this stuff for because uh, I found out this weekend that the Superior Scenics layout has some stuff that's kind of sensitive to the humidity and we want to make sure that the rolling stock's going to be able to accept that. So I'm going to go through. Uh, I've got these three done, that one in the works, and then four boxes to go that are full after this one. So let's get started. So some basic things that you guys will need for tuning your cars is some extra couplers, especially if you have something that's broken, missing a spring, whatever. Um, I know there's always extra springs when you buy KD couplers, and that's awesome because once in a while they pop out or they don't come with them. Whatever the case may be, it's always nice to have some extras. I've got my Micromark truck tuner. This thing has saved hundreds of rail cars. So next you're going to need a screwdriver with a Phillips and a flathead because some of these older cars have flatheads on them. That's all right. We still love them. Um... A truck gauge so as I test as I put everything together I roll it on here to see how it works before and after um, just so that way I know kind of what I'm getting into with the car what some of the issues may be so this one's pretty free rolling uh, works okay so what I'm gonna do is have a sip of my what was a frozen coke from McDonald's oh that's good and uh, we're going to take one side off at a time, take the screw out, pull the wheel sets out of the truck, we're going to take our truck tuner. Now one end has a sharp, they both have points, but one end has a cutting edge. So you want to make sure that cutting edge gets in all four corners 
of the truck. So you just want to pinch it gently here and then roll it. And you'll feel it smooth out and you'll see the plastic in there. So you just want to do all four sides nice and neat. You don't you don't want to go crazy. Um, the only time I would go crazy is if you have like a standard Atherin ready to roll truck um, and you wanted to put inner mountain or proto wheel sets in it because they actually have a narrow tread or a narrower um, uh, points is you'll actually have to really uh, get those out. So this one is an old roundhouse model so you can actually see some of the plastic flack on here. So we're just going to break that off here. Just to clean up the look of the truck a little bit. And now we can put this back in here. And it rolls a lot better. So again, we're taking this little hole here where the pin sits in, or the end of the wheel set, the point, sits. And we're smoothing that out. Perfect. So now we're going to put the screw back in. And the biggest thing we're trying to do here is we don't want to over tighten it, we want, but we also don't want a ton of play. So like right now, this thing can just move all over the place, okay? And I can't tell you how many cars I've come across in people's collections that do that. And if you have no problems with that, that's fine. Um, so this one, I've got it so there's just a little bit of play. You don't need a lot. You don't. Especially if both trucks are going to have it. What I prefer to do on my layout is have one truck that just swivels and have the other truck that has a little bit of play in it. And that way you don't end up with the car that's bobbing down the track. Okay, so that side's done. And as I'm going through, I'm looking at the couplers, I'm looking at the car body, I'm looking for damage, I'm looking for whatever um, I may need to fix, repair, touch up on these things. Um, since this isn't my personal equipment, uh, I'm not worried about applying graffiti or cataloging what I'm doing. Normally I would sit here and I'd have my computer pulled up and I'd have a spreadsheet. I'd put down the car number. I'd put down if it's got couplers, metal wheels, metal axles, uh, and with, whether it's somebody's skill couplers or not. I'd take note of all that. And then you always just want to give a light little blow into the journals just to knock out any uh, dust or dirt or debris. Um, I personally recommend if you're going to use anything to lubricate these trucks, that you use Labelle oil, just straight up oil, don't use graphite. And the reason I say that is just from personal experience, I've used both, the oil works best. Um, if you're not using it that much, don't lube it. Don't put anything in there, because whatever you use is gonna collect dust if it just sits. Um, but from my experience, just a drop, I mean a tiny drop of oil. And you could do that before you put the truck back in, so you just get right inside the trucks. Because if you get on the wheel surface, um, you know, now you got it all over the face of the wheel. But if you just do it when you have the truck off and just put a drop in each corner, then it's going to work real nice. And it's not going to be getting everywhere. So that's much more free rolling than it was. I mean, it's literally just going with the grade of what the table sitting at on my floor, cement floor in the basement. And that's exactly what we want to see. I remember the first problem I really had after I did this to all of my rolling stock, especially my covered hoppers um, and my ore train, was even when I went to the club, I actually had a bunch, I'd have a train sitting there and I'd go to switch out an industry. And also my train would start rolling away. I was like, well, what the heck's going on? And, well, I just lubricated and tuned all my cars, and they are so free-rolling that they wouldn't sit still unless it was perfectly level, um, which is a moment of pride but also a moment of annoyance because now you need to chalk your train into place every time you stop. So it's nice because you can pull a lot more with a lot less. It's less work on your locomotives. It's less work on the cars and the couplers. Um... But at the same time, it's more work for you now because now you need to run a DPU so that way you can hold your train in place if that's what you want to do or chalk the train in place. Um, or if you run a caboose, run a caboose with a pinched truck so that uh, it doesn't roll away. And then that way it keeps your train taut. I'm not going through. <sighs> I'm not putting these things to NMRA weight or anything like that. These things should work just fine. They're only being really run together. And I've gathered, I think, all the cars 
off the layout that all the generic coal cars, not all the tiny ones, not the 70 and 50 ton or old school two bay hoppers, just the Beth Gun style coal porters. All right. So this guy, unfortunately, as tight as those screws will go, that's it. So now we're going to check the height. And it is a tad low. So let's check the coupler pocket, make sure that's tight. That seems pretty tight. So if we're low on both sides, what we'll do is we'll add a red fiber washer. Still a little low. Just a little. So that red fiber washer now is going to act to raise the height of the coupler. And they'll give me an opportunity to snug up these trucks. So now... bust out these guys. So these are just insulating fiber washers that you can use for either insulating the trucks or uh, adjusting the height of a car which is what we're using them for today. I've got a couple I've trimmed down for other purposes. So this does take some time but it can save you a world of trouble. And just adjust the height up ever so slightly and now it should also allow us to tighten these trucks down a little bit more and have a little bit more control over them. Much better. So I can actually back that guy off an eighth of a turn. Nope, oh, too much. There we go, I'm happy with that. I am very picky about how I uh, tune my cars because I want them to run the best forever. I don't want to have a few people over and all of a sudden have a massive derailment because um, they get stage fright. I think we've all seen that happen either to us or to someone else. Make sure everything is working nicely. I just give the trucks a nice roll. And if I don't feel a lot of... Uh, action on there then I know it's good to go so that side's good that side's good and what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the top of the coupler lines up so they both look pretty good to me so I'm satisfied with that and now we should have another car to work flawlessly with everything else we've got so I've got another 40 or 50 cars to go and uh, hopefully we'll have another video for you coming out in the next few weeks here about running the skull train. We'll get back to Birchwood Lumber. And um, we've added some details. We've got a lot more details to go. And then we're going to get the Red Deer logging. And we're going to do some switching there. We cleaned the track this weekend there. We did a bunch of work on the layout. And uh, we'll have some more video for you guys coming soon. Until then, take care and have a great weekend. That's cool.